Please welcome award-winning filmmaker and the director of the acclaimed documentary Without Precedent, The Supreme Life of Rosalia Bella, Barry Averich. Good evening. As a founding board member of Walk of Fame and a passionate advocate for celebrating Canadians here and around the world, Jeffrey Latimer and his team has refined the core mission of this organization. And I have to tell you, it's refreshing and profound to celebrate arts and culture tonight for the sole purpose that they were created, to entertain us versus dividing us. Heather Reisman, founder of Indigo, once said, the world needs more Canada. And I can tell you that the world right now needs more Rosie Bella. What an extraordinary life of first, 41 honorary degrees, the youngest judge appointed in Canadian history, the first pregnant judge in Canadian history, the first Jewish female Supreme Court judge, the first refugee to sit on the Supreme Court. And all of this is beyond her iconic and historic rulings on equality, immigration, and same-sex marriage. We are living in difficult and divisive times, and what inspired me to make a film about Rosie Bella is that she is a lighthouse in a storm. Whether you've read her judgments, studied her life journey, or simply taken an elevator ride with her, she inspires you to see through the darkness, find compromise, and be a better person. Law above war, compassion over division. We have been screening this film at festivals all over the world, and it's beyond moving to see her story move people to tears and inspire a new generation that will hopefully preserve this world. It doesn't hurt that Rosalia Bella is a cuddly Jewish grandmother. It's sugar on top of a career of a life lived with purpose, a life that I cherish and my family cherishes being part of, a life worth celebrating globally. And best of all, she is Canadian. Please watch this short film. doesn't know Rosie Abella. Everyone knows Rosie Abella. She was the youngest judge in Canadian history. 17 years as a Supreme Court judge. One of the great living justices in the world. Challenging figure in terms of what she stands for as a thinker. Rosie was the roll up your sleeves person. Rosie's incomparable. She is always true to her own paths. She's true to her values. She's true to herself. I mean, Mila always used to say about Rosie, Brian, look, what, what do you want? Here, she's a great wife, she's a great mother, she's a great tourist, and she plays the piano like a concert pianist. What else do you want? <laughs> My parents left a very strong sense in me that we'd been given a gift of being able to come here, and I had to repay that gift by being somebody Canada would one day be proud of. Canada was in many ways pretty Neanderthal, and uh, Rosie appeared determined to cause us to, to break out of this. We didn't have a definition of equality in this country, so I came up with the idea that you have to think of equality as acknowledging and accommodating people's differences so they can be treated as equals. She is a very appropriate expression of what equality means. She doesn't only fight for it, she represents what at its best it can be. She writes for ordinary men and women to understand what the law is and what justice is. Her decisions have had such a wide-ranging impact on Canadian society. Very inspiring, influential, definitely iconic. When we look at what she's been able to do in the Supreme Court, we shouldn't forget the social consequences of what she did. I wanted always just to be really good at what I did, whatever that turned out to be. And I always give it my all, and I gave this my all, and I have loved every second of it. Please welcome legal rock star, Rosalie Silberman Abella. I love this music. I 
So the tears begin. That beautiful Gershwin song, Our Love is Here to Stay, is for my husband, Irving Abella. Itchy. You can't see him, but he's right here beside me, where he's been every step of this walk. This night and everything else in my life is because of Itchy and my family. For our sons, Jacob and Zachary, for their wives, Marnie and Susanna, and for their children, Felix and Maisie. So it's their star too. And our whole family is honored to be on the Walk of Fame with the magnificent class of 2023. And so to all the other recipients who walk to their own star, Warmest congratulations, or as we say on the Supreme Court of Canada, muzzle tough. <laughs> My own walk started in a displaced persons camp in Stuttgart, Germany. My parents, who got married in Poland on September the 3rd, 1939, spent most of the war in concentration camps. Their two-and-a-half-year-old son and my father's whole family were killed at Treblinka. They went to Germany after the war, where my father, who was a lawyer, taught himself English and was hired by the Americans to help set up a system of legal services for displaced persons. In an act of what seems to me to be breathtaking optimism, my parents decided to have more children. I was born on July the 1st. 1946, and my sister was born two years later. After a few years of trying, we were finally allowed to get into Canada and arrived at Pier 21 in May 1950. When we arrived, my father was told by the Law Society that he wasn't allowed to practice law because he wasn't a citizen. That was the moment I decided to become a lawyer. I was four years old. I had no idea what it meant, but if he wasn't going to be able to do what he should be able to do, then I was going to do it. My father never complained about not being able to practice his profession or about what happened during the war, and neither did my mother. They were just grateful to be in Canada and to have the chance to raise their two daughters in a wonderful, safe country that believed in the potential of its people. And how right they were. Five decades after we arrived, Canada transformed their daughter from a refugee in a displaced persons camp into a judge on the Supreme Court of Canada. You cannot be born in the shadow of the Holocaust to two Jews who survived it without an exaggerated and fearless commitment to the pursuit of fairness and justice. And you cannot live a life without hope when the very fact of your birth reflects a tenacious belief that the world would turn fairer. But I worry that the ideals of fairness and justice that guided me all my life are under siege and suffering from a crisis of legitimacy. It's worth remembering that 75 years ago, shortly after I was born, a magnificent consensus resulted in the phoenixes that rose from the ashes of Auschwitz, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and the Genocide Convention. There were to be no more killings or human rights abuses. Those incredible documents were our generation's acknowledgement that what happened to Jews in World War II would never happen again to anyone. So we set out to eradicate anti-Semitism, racism, homophobia, sexism, Islamophobia, and intolerance generally. That was our designated trajectory, and it was the inspiration for the world's conscience. 
But right now, we seem to be trapped in a rhetorically tempestuous climate, polluted by obtuse shibboleths, a climate where history is irrelevant, people and ideas are canceled, respect is invisible, truth is homeless, and unjustifiable conduct is justified. Nothing justifies rape, or beheading, or hostage taking, or anti-Semitism, or any kind of hate. It's time to stop yelling and start listening to each other, to reclaim ownership of the compassion and liberal democratic values we fought World War II to protect, and to put respect and humanity back in charge by replacing global hate with global hope. My life started in a country where there had been no democracy, no rights, and no justice. No one with this history does not feel lucky to be alive and free and no one with this history does not feel that we have a duty to promise our children that we will do everything possible to keep the world safer for them than it was for their grandparents. A world where all children, regardless of race, color, religion, or gender, can wear their identities with dignity, with pride, and in peace. I am very proud to be inducted into the Walk of Fame, but I'll never forget where and how my walk started. Thank you, Jeff Latimer and the Walk of Fame team, and above all, above all, thank you, Canada. I am so proud to be a Canadian.